Hey there, what's going on? Can you guys hear me? See if I can get these Bluetooths to connect. <clears throat> What's going on? So up close, you can hear me. I'm trying to with these. I went to go look for a headphone, like a microphone. I ordered these on Amazon a while back. What's up, man? I ordered this on Amazon. This. And this, but it wasn't working. Nothing was coming out of it, so I gave up. What's everybody up to? When's the laser coming? Soon, I hope. Soon, I hope. Did that get loud? Or is it all right? I mean, I don't know. We still do DTF prints. Um, we do DTF prints. It's not my position to say anything about what happened. Um, I feel for the guy if that's what the cause was, or if it was DTF printing that, that caused it, and I feel for him. But. The video is down, it's not up no more. Um, so I don't know, you know what I mean? We're still doing it. I don't get on here and post about it. I know a lot of people have been lately, but yeah, we order so I order a big, huge bag, like a really big bag. We've had, it has no labels on it, that one doesn't. But supposedly, um, I guess he was doing it for a long time in a certain area, I'm not sure. I watched some of the video, I didn't watch all of it. Just keep your hands clean, flicking it, watch where you're flicking it. Jesse, if you're doing DTF prints, just be careful with how you're, how you're messing with it, because it could be, I guess, airborne hazard, but that's with anything, that's what I see it. When it comes to screen printing, it's the same thing.
It's been a long time since I've been on. I am going to Deco Summit this year. I am. I just haven't said anything about it. I haven't put it out yet, but I am going to Deco Summit. Um, it's in August, I believe, this year. Um, with Deco Summit, we, I talked to, I know it was like in the beginning, it was myself, A-Dub and Katrina, like out with them. And I think we're gonna do like, a, whoever's out there, not just us three, but whoever's out there, we're gonna do like a big, big thing the first day, which is gonna be cool, because it's something that we're doing, not with the coma, trying to get away from the whole coma thing and do our own thing. And then whoever else is going out there to speak, we're just gonna get us all together so that we can do something. They don't give us long, they only give us like an hour when we go out there to speak. I start talking, I guess talk to you. So I'm just saying, chicks. Oh, uh, yeah, there's a lot of those community scares out there. Um, I guess it all depends on your, like, where you're at. You know what I mean? Like, our environment that we have in here is really big. So, I guess if you're in an enclosed area that's small, it could be pretty hazardous whenever you're doing that. Um, just ventilate it somehow, open up a door, open up a window. Um, so just be careful, you know, whatever you're doing. It's not my it's not my place to educate anybody on it. And I'm not gonna come on here and tell you that I'm wearing that we're wearing full face masks, we're wearing gloves, we're wearing all this PPE, um, and we've never done it before. But we've been doing, I've been doing DTF printing for a while. You guys know that. Um, so it's just not my place. That's how I see it. I think screen printing, um, screen printing powder is a lot finer than this DTF powder. Because I've done DTF, I mean, uh, screen print transfers before. And I stopped doing it because, not because... I was like, well, I'm breathing it all in because whenever I got done, everything in the screen printing area was totally white. So I was like, mm, I don't think this is fine. Designs by hand. Designs by hand. Exactly. That's, and that's why I say I can't come on here and say, well, this is that. Um, there's a lot of things that can go into it. New Mexico, what's up, Jerome? Yeah, so we got embroidery jobs that we're doing. I'm running some hats over here. He's got about 90 rubs over here that he's running for. He's got more than 90. He's got all these, but that box right there had 90 of them. Just the ones that are on the floor. He's doing those while well, I'm running these. And I'm trying to do the same logo that we're doing right now. There's some white hats. I think I'm just about done with them. I think that was the last one that needs to be done. These with the 3D puff on it. Clean it up. Clean up some of the foam that's on there. There, use a heat gun to clean that up. Um, yeah. There's tons of things in this world that can that can harm you. Um, so just be careful with what, what you're doing it and where you're doing it at whenever you do it. Well, let's talk about embroidery. That's what I want to talk about. Um, you guys got questions about embroidery you know i've been doing embroidery for now for i don't even know four or five years now maybe i started with the m2 1501 got one over there that's my first one and then i outgrew it got the six head got another single head and i just picked up this three head a couple months ago that's the 20 needle that Nakoma has the three head 20 needle 
I've seen another, I don't have room for another six head or something bigger than that. We have one out of room here. There's Lori. Let's say hi, Lori. She's getting all of it. I'm putting all of our, all of this stuff into the system right now so that we can keep it going. If you guys got questions, what can we wait? Two hours. Two, I mean, uh, three hours. I use three. It's all that. So I, I order them by the digital. I use the three ounce for anything that we're doing, and then I got this one. If you're doing anything with polyester material, Take a screenshot of that. I'll hold it up for a second. Screenshot. Good to go. So this one's really good. Um, when you're doing anything with polyester because it helps it from puffing. You guys if you do a do an embroidery on a t-shirt or something that's polyester and you'll notice that you get done. It likes to pucker up a little bit. This right here. Keep it from doing that. So I use this and then I'll put so I use this against the shirt, if that makes sense. And then I'll put the, the three ounce behind it. So it's, it's doubled up, but this right here will help the uh, Maybe you all going to Deco Center? This year, I'll just put in the flood right here. I don't know. Maybe I'm just using a... Because these are unstructured hats. It's just going to tear it out. It tears right out. I would just say. Nice ones right out. So I need to figure out this whole <coughs> screw thread for the bracket twist screw. You talking about these back here? You talking about the ones in the back? 
to hold on to the machine. What are you talking about? Like this right here. So I'm not sure of the thread. I'm still trying to figure out that one. But if you have a table like this that goes across here, the screws that are on there can be used up there. I've been trying to find them on Amazon. Um, I know behind me there's a... Behind here there's a place where they sell screws. It's called Ace Hardware. There's Ace Hardware behind me and you can go in there and put it in there. Like they have the little strip that you can go in there and tie them into. I just haven't done that yet, but I know you can go over there and do that. But it's always easier to do that if not get one of these. So you're not trying to use an Allen key. This thing right here works. Works really good. Yeah, the twist knobs. <clears throat> no, I won't show you because I take it off. The table's going to go down. It's going to be hard to do. So I won't show you that right now. Are you the one that wrote me, wrote on one of the videos earlier? If it is, I'll, I will, um, I'll get the size for you so that you'll know. The second, the second gen can do closer to the hat rim. Um, I guess you can get a little bit closer. You know, all de all depends on your parameters how you set them. I can get really close with these. Um, I don't really do a lot of hats with these. I use the second gen hoop station to do visors. Let me show you. Grab the visor that I just did. Gen 2, you can get really, 
could do really good on visors. They come out really good. I don't even use backing because usually this is already sturdy enough. I don't even use backing for that. Yeah. It looks good. So that's what I use the Gen 2 cap frame more for more. Um, I'm pretty sure you can get a little bit more. They have the new ones, which is just a wire. You can switch it all out. So I get more craziness locally now. Um, I, I still do a lot of stuff through social media, not as much as I used to. Whenever I first started doing this from home, like all I had was nothing but time to create videos and do stuff like that. Um, but now, these days, like it's more of a local business. I, I still do get a lot of, um, I do still get some stuff online. But a majority of it is from local business now. Yeah, just post your stuff online so that people can see it. I post a lot on Instagram throughout the day of like my stories of what we're doing. Appreciate that.
Yeah, so I started all of this. I don't know how long you've been following for. You just got here. But I started this five years ago. I was doing this from home as a, as a hobby, like most of us do. And um, slowly, everything started coming into place. So we got embroidery. We do embroidery here. I got six head, two single heads, three head. The screen printing stuff is over there. My DTF stuff is over here. My daughter, she does my DTF stuff. Um, and then over there, back over there is another part of the store where we sell um, vinyl and all that other stuff. Vinyl for people that like to do their own things. Um, hardly ever. I hardly ever use 60 weight. I mean, uh, no, yes, I do. Everything that I use is, is the 40 weight bread. You see it. You see it? You focus. Right there. You focus. Yeah, 40 weight bread. It's 65. The needles that I'm using is. This is this just came off. So that's without it cleaning it up yet. So that just came off. Looks pretty good. The little letters look good. 65. It's 65 nine for the left for the for the needle. And I don't have any issues with it. Some people are having issues with 65 nines and using the 75 eleven. Um, for me, we have a lot of success using the, the 65 nines. Um, I guess if you're using a smaller machine, you might need the bigger needles because the, the motors on those aren't as strong as they are with, with this one, that one, and those over there. So you have to just um, check to see how it goes. Appreciate that, Jesse. But all the thread that I have up there, that's all Madeira 40 weight thread. That's Madeira's classic thread. And then I got some other stuff over there that um, doctor's offices use. And they want to use the exact color that the last person was using. So um, I use, that's what I use those for. That's, what is it? Uh, the Nold is one of them. Seems like a big baby, you gotta keep your eye on it. Um, all the bobbins run out at different times. So a minute ago when it stopped, the bobbin ran out. Now again it stopped, the bobbin ran out. So a lot of people will try to fish underneath the hat to try to pull the bobbin out. Um, that's one way to do it. I usually just take it off. And as you can see where the bobbin came through, um, just be careful that you don't take those off. You don't take those off and you don't hit this right here because then you're going to unregister the hat. So this one, these buttons right here. Red is stop, green is go. You'll see another set right there. And right there, there's another set. So I don't have to walk all the way back to the display over there to start it. I can actually back it up and start it. Right here. So it. So only back needle is going right now. And now all of them are going. So when I back it up a little bit, the machine knows that I backed it up because of that. Head that has stopped and then whenever um, it catches up to where it's supposed to be all the heads like that. yeah I do a ton of I do a ton of it's in one twelve ton of them. this one's a one twelve this one is and I can show you 
sorry. You already picked up the other one? The one with the hanger that was on it? Here's a box right here. This one, 112. Yeah, we're gonna get this logo. And then here's the. Clothes that I carry. In step. And then the vinyl stands over there. Yeah, ton of, ton of Richardson hats. Did these yesterday. This is a Pacific Headroom. So this is actually puff right here. I'm running one on that one now. That's how we line up the scrub every single day. Can't use the Mighty Hoop Station or the Hoop Master with that because it's just not the same. Because of the V neck, and if you put it on there with the V neck, you're gonna, your image is going to go a lot lower than. Measure everyone. We have, a, we have a placement. I have a placement that I've shown them. Where I know what's supposed to put it so that we have the same placement and the consistency every single time. I am standing in the came with that. Came with the machines. Jason, what's going on, man? Um, every aspect, man. I'm just, like someone just said, Chris said, um, yes. let me go back. Condi is out of business. Let me go. Let's see. 
those. Do you use backing on the hat? I do. So you look right here. Here's my cap frame, and right here is where I have my backing. So you probably don't see it, but I'm grabbing it as I'm doing it, whatever I'm hooking it. On these hats I am, on the Richardson hats I don't, if that's a question, I'm not sure. Um, just a tear away, lighter, and as you can see, look, you know, people will say that the Lacoma machine is crap or whatever they want to say about them, but if you ask me, I think I'm doing pretty good with the Lacoma machine. No complaints over here. Um, So you got you gotta look at it both ways. Chris is asking, do you do a lot of screen printing? What part of your business is most profitable? Um, it, it, it's all balanced, man, like it is. Like it's hard to like I cannot do like if I don't do a screen printing job right now, if I don't do a screen printing job tomorrow, I'm okay with it. These machines, they run every day. Let me show you. And I'm not gonna and I can't like this is live questions that's being asked right now. So I can't just go and make this up, right? So DTF happens every single day, all day, right? Every single day, all day. Um, screen printing, I'm not doing any right now, but if you look at the board, these are all that's coming up. All these jobs are coming up. So, you know, I, I couldn't just come over here and come jot this down. We, we're live, you know what I mean? So that's not something that I could just make up. Um, so if all, all those jobs are in the line, whenever you, oh, sorry, was a pink, was my pinky covering the volume? My wife was telling me that sometimes. Switch. All right. So like I was saying, I just can't make that up. You know what I mean? And, and I can do, I can do backpacks right here, eight backpacks at $20 a piece. That's 160 bucks, right? I get an order for screen printing, 100 shirts. We're making good money. I'm not gonna say how much we're gonna make, but you, get, you gotta just say the average cost for screen printing 100 shirts is 12 bucks. Do the math. Yeah, that was my fault. My wife was saying I was covering it with my with my thumb, more my pinky, whatever. Um. <clears throat> So in all aspect, every every part of this place pulls its own weight. Um, right now, my wife format printer, I'm not printing nothing with it, but I got two big jobs coming up. I got one for uh, a trailer that we're doing, and I'm printing it, another guy's installing it, and just for the print, they're charging like 2500 bucks. What's up? Say what's up. What's up? What's up? This dude, this dude has grown up in this place, right, Jay Sean? Jay, this is my, this is my place. This is my place. <laughs> and then it is the place. So this dude, this dude, this dude has grown up here. If you guys watch one of my early videos when he was a baby, and now look at him. It's a big boy. Big boy now. I'm good, man. Everything's good. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's the print lights, you know what I mean? So, Chris, I hope I answered your question with that. Um, screen printing, the profit margins. I can't say the profit margins are low. Embroidery has a good profit margin. Think about it. Pay like eight bucks for one of these. How many jobs can you do with one of these? A ton. Um, this is uh, two colors, white and blue, white and navy blue. I'm not using much thread at all to do this. And I got 60 of these that we're doing. So 
these are already done and cleaned up, ready to go. These are the next one. Take these out, because these are the next one. I'm going to do the next two. I'm going to put these to the side. And then I'm going to count those. I'm going to take those off. I think I need one more. I'm going to start running on the single head. This thing be flipping everywhere. Zoom out. Right. And then I'm going to run that last one that I have on the single head machine. So let me coop that one real quick and I can show you guys. Cool. I hope I answered your question. Like I was telling you, like right here, I keep my back in right here. So, I have to take that out. Then I just cut it here. Got my back in. Hopefully you can hear me. Got my back in. Now you can see my back ends in place. We went from an unstructured hat to a somewhat structured hat, right? I just take it, stick it right there. Where that one goes. Then I'm gonna go ahead and start pulling these off. One thing I could tell you guys, one thing I could tell you if you're doing this, I have. What's that? That's all of them? All 90? Sweet. And then you got those down there that need names. So you could do the left chest on those and then just do the names afterwards. But the paperwork, it's under that, that bag right there. The the top one. No, the top, the top backpack. The top backpack. Right. So what I was saying is, if you're doing this, these little clips that are on here, these little clips that are on here, make sure that you constantly, maybe the end of every day, check those, check those, tighten them every day. So you don't end up with something like this. Where's it at? Right here. I got like five of these now that don't have that clip. I can't use it. So just keep an eye out for those. I get a ton of walk-in customers now. Um, with the storefront, I get a ton. We get every day man it's, it's crazy and there's a lot of people that do it from home and they're very successful doing it from home um, i've just been a lot more success successful doing it with the storefront now. and i just take a lighter looks full cool.
has one little jump stitch that goes in this P right here. You can see it right there with the clean out. trying to he wants to put a front window I do those too just I just did the front window of mine it came out pretty good appreciate those hearts whoever was doing that doesn't tell me it just shows me appreciate y'all though I haven't been on YouTube in forever he's alive <clears throat> my wife is always telling me to get on here but I'm like I'm too busy to do I think I spent two hours looking for some, a microphone. I bought this one on Amazon probably around Christmas. And we plugged it in and got it all ready and it sounded like crap. I do one off orders. We do. Some people don't do it, you know what I mean? But I do. Um, I did one for a customer, because you never know who they are, you know what I mean? Um, I did one for a customer, the guy came in here, he's like, I just need one hat, Joe. And I was like, hey, I can do it for you. He's like, I want you to do me one hat, I want it in 3D puff, and then I want to do another hat with it flat. So I was like, oh yeah, I could do it. Um, I did the two hats for him, we left with him. Uh, I didn't do them that at that moment, but you know I got it digitized, did some stitch outs, um, got it all approved. Once he approved it, then he I showed him everything, and then he's like, "Yeah, let's do it." So then I did the two hats for him, and came back and ordered 400 hats. So you know what I mean? I don't turn down any business if it's it's because the simple fact is it's just not me anymore. It's more than just a joke. that makes sense to you guys yeah 400 I was like he came back and he's like hey Joe remember me I was like yeah he's like this is something I'm gonna do once a year and I was like cool 400 hats I was like, yeah, let's do it that's what I said you never know who you're dealing with, unless you, like, you, you never know, you know what I mean? Especially when it comes to, you know, does anybody, does anybody have a D Diablos in their, in their town? Diablos restaurant? Yeah. This, this guy that I have, that I keep showing you guys over here, he's my, my daughter's boyfriend. We're both seniors this year. And so he started working here for um, halfway through the year, whenever they have to get a job for school or whatever it was. He was working at a Walmart. Started working over here. Dude's real good. Caught on real quick when it came to the embroidery. I was like, whew, took a lot off my shoulders, you know what I mean? Um, so I'm trying to keep things going so that he doesn't go nowhere. But you know, uh, he's young. He wants to get into something different. I'm all for it, you know what I mean? You gotta go and you gotta do what you gotta do. Um, but I'm enjoying every minute, you know what I mean? Today, right now, the order that he's doing right now. This one is for, probably backwards, but it's 90 pieces and he's already, he's got,
90 pieces and that's what he has left right there and it's only gonna be four o'clock so I still got him for another three hours it's 3 30 so like three and a half hours you know what I mean? so it's good you know what I mean it's always good whenever um, your employees that you have working for you are producing you know what I mean they're they're, they're it's tough in your business you know what I mean because yeah and it's okay and, it, and it's, it's tough uh, I have another my daughter who does my DTF printing my sister-in-law she she, um, she does my embroidery today my plan was to come in here and just talk to you guys I got some towels that I need to some towels that I need to um, screen print because ah, I'm doing that. And um, we're doing um, the Masters Week this, this week. I'm in Augusta, Georgia. So the Masters Week starts next week, and I got to do 26 towels with a with a logo on it that's supposed to supposedly is sponsoring one of the golf players. So I think that'd be cool. If I show you guys me printing it and then I can find it, find that player on TV with the towel. I think it would be cool. What do y'all think? Knowing that I printed it and it's being shown, I mean, they're probably not going to show the towel. But you know what I mean? The golfer will be there with the towel. I think it's, I mean, it's, it's just... Pinter geek, I guess. I don't know. Load this one up over there. I just did, um, what's up, Angela, um, yeah, so I know Angela, you just got here, now we had talked about it in the beginning, and I just tell people like, you know, um, it's, it's not my place to, 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 to voice my opinion about what people are putting out there um, and is I just don't want I don't want to get into it because I don't know who's watching this video or who's gonna see it later on down the line um, but we just take precautions whenever we do it she does you know what I mean she, she we my wife pushes her to wear gloves you know what I mean whenever I'm doing screen printing and I'm over there cleaning screens with screen opener the fumes are very very bad and I'm over there and 20 feet away my sister-in-law who does um, my sister-in-law who does embroidery would go open the doors because that has a stronger smell than um, anything that we do in here uh, when it comes to washing out the screens you dip the tanks in a solution you know what I mean um, I I personally just tell people just to take take cautions you know what I mean um, if you're afraid of what might happen from using it, then then don't use it. You know what I mean? You can you you don't have to. You can go find these bigger companies that are doing DTF prints and just purchase them from them. Find someone in your local area that is doing DTF prints, and you can just purchase them from them. Um, if you're into DTF printing already, and it's something that you are doing, then I would just say just take precautions. Um, Keep your hands clean. Don't be doing DTF powder and then turn around and pick up a sandwich and bite it. You know what I mean? Um, and I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that 
I've been wearing glasses and I've been wearing gloves and I've been wearing all of this stuff all over the place, um, all over my body. I've been wearing all this personal protective gear the whole time I've been doing it because it's just going to be not, it's going to be false information that I'm giving you. Because um, we haven't, we haven't. And I've been doing DTF printing for a long time. Um, I'm not even sure, three or four years now? I'm not even sure. And from what he said, he was doing it for five years, from what I've heard. I watched a little bit of the video, and it wasn't something that I just wanted to hear. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's, I mean, that's true. Customs, it is. DTF is toxic and terrible quality versus other methods. I'm not saying that it's not. I'm not saying that it's not. like a screen print like I won't we will not DTF one color jobs I will not um, if someone comes in here I mean if they only want one I'm not gonna screen print but um wait. Wait, wait, wait. but we don't we don't screen print one color jobs we do DTF a ton of jobs every single day. Every single day we do a ton for people, not only local people, people online, not only local people, but people online. We do a ton. And all we can do is because we offer it, is just take precautions, right? That's all we can do. Look at her, she's over there with gloves on. Right, right, I need to sit here and tell you. That I'm gonna be wearing, or I'm gonna make my daughter wear full PPE while she's doing it. I wouldn't do that. And that's what we're, that's what we we're just discussing. You know what I mean? There's no nothing wrong with direct to garment, screen printing, or vinyl. So. There's not. So what's the difference? It's just, and it's just my, it's just my question to you. And I'm not, I'm not saying that you're right. I'm not saying that you're wrong. I'm not saying that I'm right. I just want to. Is there any? Like I want you to school me because the direct, to, direct to garment printer. I still got to pre-treat it. Is there any toxins in pre-treating? I'm, I'm not, at, I'm not trying to call you out. I don't know, so I'm asking. I, I can go grab a bottle and we can find out because I have a buttload of bottles over there that, that I don't use. Because I don't like the direct garment way because it's just a waste. You can sit there and pre treat shirts and do everything right. Toxic and non toxic. Cool. Um, and I can grab one of mine in a minute just to look at it. But my pre-treat machine, like, I just want to go take it outside to the dumpster. Because we don't, I don't use it, it's just taking up space. That'd be a perfect place to put a, a laser engraver. Eco solvent, eco solvent. Print. Anybody prints eco solvent printing, um, it's the same thing with that. It's got a very harsh smell to it. Being that I'm in a bigger environment and when I'm printing it, you can't smell it because it evaporates throughout the whole shop. You know what I mean? No petri dish. That's cool. <clears throat> I mean, I know things have gone have come a long way. I did I did pre treating for probably a couple months and was like, I'm done with this. Um, I just didn't. Oh, yeah, the fume extractor, too. You can use a fume extractor to suck up the fumes whenever you're doing the... curing the things. Do 
covering will kick off, kick off fabric dust. I mean, it could be. I'm not saying that it's not. Because I can tell you what, if I open this up right here. Kayla, if you're still here, look, I got your tool off your link. Look at that. At the end of at the end of the day, we go we go with these things and we blow out all of these where the bobbins are at. All of this, right? There's always there's always a ton of um, thread in there where where it, when it goes to trim it it trims the thread in the inside. Different materials smell different ways. This order of hats is for 60 hats. 40 of them are done. Well, 60. It was 100 hats all together because we got, um, these are already done, this was 20, this was 20, uh, and then those over there, I have 20 blue and white, 20 white and blue, and then the next one I'm going to do is the group, the white that's in here is going to be a green, so this one was for 100 hats. Bag these up. You have a charge. Are you saying a charge to like clean up your, clean up the stuff? Is that what you're saying? Some of these from Harbor Freight. These are real good. You know what we do? Stick them. Stick them on there. Put those on there. Our scissors. We put our scissors on there. You guys heard me. Appreciate it, Angela. I'm looking to do more. I'm, the next one that I'm going to do is how I do visors. Visors are really hard to do. And if you're trying to hoop a visor on these things right here, you are not going to have success. If you're trying to do them on these, you're not going to have really good success. Your image will not be this big, and it's going to be really hard to get it low like this. And you're going to have a lot of bounce right here, and you're going to break a lot of needles. Unless you guys know something that I don't know, then, hey, create a video on it. But I'm going to show you how to do these in my next video. So if you're not subscribed to my YouTube channel, make sure you... I forgot even what to say. It's been so long. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and click that uh, bell so that you're notified. Whenever I put out new content. See, I have all these, I'm telling you guys to get these things right here, these uh, magnets. To get all these magnets, you can put your stuff up there and you don't lose it. But I still lose it. There's a lot that goes into embroidery. Appreciate it, Chris. Customs is right. Um, I would suggest starting. Would you suggest starting with, with only hat embroidery or colors? I so there's a there's a lot that goes into it when it comes to doing hats. 
right? So I would just start whenever you have time, start with t-shirts. Start with t-shirts, start, start with sweaters, start doing stuff like that so that you can um, practice on that. Uh, and then whenever you have some spare time, I would start to do some practices on hats. Start with these hats right here. Or, or if you want to do a structured hat, do it like a medium structured hat. So that you're not doing something like a Richardson hat like these. That's real hard. Because if you're breaking needles right away, you're going to get really frustrated really quick. And you're going to want to be like F. Racoma. You know what I mean? But there's a science that goes behind it. Um, on Instagram the other day, there's a couple people here local. They uh, pay me to go out. I go, I, I go to their house. And I do on-site training for them at their house. And this one lady had the MT-1010. And she said, I cannot do a hat, Joe. I cannot do a hat. So I went over there. She showed me one of the hats she was trying to do. And I said, let me, let me see what you got going on. Being that it's an MT-1010 and not a 1501 or one of these other machines, it's a smaller machine, so I, I put a 7511 needle on there, so it's a little bit bigger. Uh, and I was able to finish it. The, the alignment was off a little bit, but um, it was only because she had started it, got so many needle breaks, she stopped it. And then I hooped it again to try to hoop it in the right spot, just to, so I wouldn't waste another one of her hats. Um, and then the second hat that we did, it ran just perfect. But I, I because it's the MT-1010, I keep stuff like this. I keep stuff like this around, right? It's just a, it's just a cloth with some water. And if you're having an issue with a hat, you just take that cloth out and just hold it on the hat and just drench it. And it softens up the hat a little bit, so that if you're having that issue, now you have something that's moist and it's not as hard. It's going to be easier for the needle to embroider it. Okay, so that's one way to do it. You could use a heat gun. We have a heat gun right there. That's for our 3D stuff, our 3D puff. That whenever we do it, whenever you get done, you got to run the, the, the heat gun over it so that you're able to shrink that stuff. Um, try that too. Heat up the hat. Don't hold it in one place too long, because then you could warp the hat really, really bad. Um, but if you if you heat it up a little bit and it does warp a little bit, whenever you're done, then, then when it, whenever the embroidery is done, because the heating of the hat is going to soften up the backing, the, the structured part of it. This piece back here, it's going to soften up that. And then whenever you're done, you can heat it back up and shape it back to the way it's supposed to be. Steamer too. Steamer will work just fine. Um, I have all those things, you know what I mean? Because whenever I first started doing hats, blew my mind like but now but now I do it we do it so much like if if we're running if we're running a, an order yeah. on hats and we're doing six hats at a time and I'm doing Richardson hats say I'm doing Richardson hats six at a time and for some reason I just ran six of them with no issues and then the next time we start to run them again Say, say head number five right here, the needle just breaks and breaks and breaks and breaks. And we're just like, like how did it just go from running perfect to causing issues? And there could be something that's up with the hat. You never know. So then we're just like, count it as a loss. And it sucks, but you got to do it. Take the hat off, turn off the head, finish, the, finish that run, throw the next run on there. Boom, it runs perfect again. It's, you know, sometimes it's just a hat. Sometimes it's just a hat. I do. For um, faster, anything that's before three days, we uh, we use. So our thing is seven to ten days. Anything that comes in. Um, if someone wants something quicker, it's a twenty-five percent rush fee. So we just. I did one this morning. They brought it in yesterday and needed it for tomorrow. Um, so it was a good order, probably like 100 and 130 bucks, plus the 25% rush fee, makes it worth it. You know what I mean? So it's always good to, because 
people come in here and see they like they come in here and see what we got going on you know what I mean? yeah we're not using that machine right now but both of us are he's he's over there concentrating on those three i'm concentrating on these six you know what i mean we got to stop to do that you know what i mean so um yeah we do charge for a rush i need to find my yep 25 percent rush feet even if you're not busy even if you're not busy if anybody comes in and tells you Joe, embroidery thread, no ID customs. I hate to tell you this, but can you do this for me by tomorrow? Oh yeah, 25% rush fee. Oh, and I guarantee you they're gonna be like, let's do it. Because they need it, you know what I mean? And it's not just like, I'm gonna upsell them. It's because now you're putting me under the pressure of getting it done for you, you know what I mean? Exactly, right? Hey, people don't understand. You got to pay to skip the line. Right, Bill? He said, you, people don't understand. You want to skip the line at Six Flags, you got to pay that extra money. Mm -hmm. Right? Yep. Got to pay that extra. Hey, that's a good way to put it. That's what I'm going to start using from now on. Is Six Flags still a thing? Yes. Is it? Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. Do you know what Six Flags uh, means? Six Flags? No. What? Oh. <laughs> hey, Jacob, did you? There yeah, they are. Did you take those? The blue ones I was using. What? Then, then the, the. Well, those have a tape on them. What? No, this. Yeah, but you're, that was using oh yeah, I know. Mine keep getting taken. So these are good scissors to have right here. Those of you that are doing embroidery, that little hook right there is really good. Especially so like right now, like I was telling you. Um right here where the P's at. I'm gonna point to it right. Right there, you see how it jumps? So then I could just take this, hook it under there and rip it, or tear, tear the thread, tear the thread, not the string, because it's not string, right? And then I'll just take a lighter to it. We charge $30 for digitizing. I try to give a rough, a rough estimate of what their price would be if I digitize it, we digitize it, try to give them a rough estimate of what the cost would be by looking at it per stitch count. I was asking you guys about Diablos earlier, I don't know if anybody said anything. But the other day I did. I was telling, I was telling you guys, just don't judge a, don't judge a book by its cover, right? Because people do that. People tend to do a lot of that these days. Um, a guy came in here was looking to get those backpacks done that I was showing you guys. We had eight of them, and he was talking about getting them done. And I was like, yeah, we can get them done. Hey, how's it going? Good. My buddy works in your friend with you now. Hi. Who? Addison. Oh, uh, she's your buddy? Yeah, she might go to school with my daughter. She's your friend. She's the best kid at school. My daughter and her go to school together. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. Right. I got three tubs. Three of them? Yeah. I sent okay. an order earlier. Yeah, I saw it. Okay. So just put it here and you want to bring the other ones in and I'll get yeah, you. Yeah. I'll oh. stack them up. Your bestest friend's helping you? <laughs> <laughs> so there's another order just came in. Three tubs of stuff. Three tubs of stuff. It's like a ton of screen printing and a ton of embroidery. All right, I could do that. See, so, so these are things that I need to write down. Lori, write that down. Then I'll be like, I need to do a video. What do I need to do a video?
So the father can say, yeah. um, can you tell them to take it? Oh, it's not me. Hey, that's how it is, man. Look, we just, we get thread, we rip it off, go to the floor. Look, thread everywhere. At the end of the night, 6.30, we, we close, so we're open from 11 to 7. 6.30, 6.30, we, we shut down everything, and then we, uh, we start to uh, clean up, vacuum, clean and everything. I got the best customers in the world, man. So she runs, uh, she's one of those. She does, how do I say this? She promotes everything but does nothing. That's how I say it. That's how I always say it, right? Um, which is a very smart thing to do if you can get into it. Promote everything but do nothing. Get contract pricing, and then bring it to me, and then I print it. Appreciate that, Ralph. Hey, Jacob, Ralph is making fun of your floor, man. He said your floor looked like garbage. Who said that? Ralph. Alright. Keep typing on that keyboard. <laughs> no, nah, he just said, I say, yeah. Um, affi no, not, not like an affiliate. So she she has, it's called Streamlabs. And, and what she does is she set up, she sets up stores for everybody. And then she'll go to the schools and set up spirit stores and all that other stuff and then they put the order through her and she brings it to me I print it make my part and she makes her part what up G what you got she said that's my that's my bestie over there she said, that's my, my daughter's bestie. She don't watch me. I said, that's my daughter's bestie too.
we do affiliates for the vinyl stand. Any of you guys do any uh, promoting on your social media? I do affiliates, affiliate link on the vinyl stand to where if you promote the vinyl, you can uh, make 10% off of whatever that person, whoever buys it. What's the backpack story? Backpack? Did she say something? I don't, I don't know. Did she say something? About a backpack? You're talking about the backpacks that are there. So, Ralph, I started doing this in 2018. How many years ago that was? 18, 19, 19. Six years, man. I, that's crazy. Six years. Six years. I got three, three storefront units. One, two, three. Uh, I'm gonna have to go talk to this guy too. So. I know there's another guy that's gonna order. He wants to order some screen print stuff. Oh, I was doing it a year. My wife had to clear that for me. Appreciate it. So I started doing it from home. You guys watch my YouTube channel. Go all the way back to the beginning. Everything's on there. When I first started doing it from home, with my very first heat press. So this one, <clears throat> appreciate it. So this one I'm gonna do two. Do two of them first and then I'm gonna run the other ones because there's a total of 20. So I'm at the, the thread is already on this one. I don't have the, the green thread on that machine over there. So I'm gonna run two on this machine. After I run those two, I'm then gonna run three sets of six. So let me hit these two.
I, I didn't leave it up front by the register. Oh, you found it? Okay. Yeah. I'm going to switch the colors on this one. Make sure all the colors are the same before I do it. Oh, got you. So this dude was says after I did these for him, he told me that he was the owner of four different Diablos. So then he comes now. He says he's in a, like after I did these, he's gonna come back and bring me all his work from his four different stores. I'm not in California. I'm in uh, Augusta, Georgia. Georgia.
Yeah, I get a lot of people that ask for one hat. Um, and I just tell them, like, if they're coming in for one hat, they got to pay a $30 digitizing. I just tell them that their first hat is going to cost them about 50 bucks because they're going to pay for digitizing, which is 30 And then the, the hat, the Richardson hat, depending on the style they get, and then plus the embroidery. So it's about $22 for the hat embroidered plus the $30 digitizing. Nah, Ralph, I'm in uh, Georgia. You haven't... For the Red Bulldogs? No. Alright, so this is going to be our first run. I just switched the colors to the green with the navy. And your first run, when you're running on a big machine, is always your worst run. This isn't even the first run. We're just doing two right now. But because that's when you're going to have your thread that's going to break and everything's going to happen in this during this first run. But after that, we should be good. We're going to do this first one make sure our colors are good. talking about the Georgia Bulldog Customers bring their own stuff. It's the same price, the same price to embroider it. And we are not at fault if we embroider something and a needle breaks and messes up the garment. Um, and that's something that we let them know before we actually do anything to it. Um, if, if someone was like, hey, I want to get one hat done. Um, here's the hat that I want to get done with this logo. I'm like, all right, I'll do it. But if something happens to it, that is not our fault then we do not replace the garment. Um, if it's something that they purchase it from us and we're doing something and it, something happens to it, then I'll replace it. But I charge the same if they bring their own thing, if they bring their own hat, or I provide it. Or I provide the hat. But for the most part, everything usually runs smooth. We've done 30 hats, plus these, 60 all together, and haven't had any issues with any of them. So hopefully I didn't jinx myself. Cash only for customer. That's one way to do it. Checking all these, getting that puff out of there. Where are you guys out of um, No ID Customs? Where are y'all out of? Or where are you out of?
D.C., Chicago, Illinois. Where's everybody else out of? I'm originally from Texas. Originally from Texas, but now I'm in Georgia. And I don't charge any different if someone brings in their own stuff. I don't charge, I don't charge for color changing. I don't charge for um, hooping fees. I just say, all right, here's what your stitch count has, and this is what I'm going to charge you. And 99% of the time, nobody has an issue with it. You might get one every now and then, but not many. Hopefully we can just keep it that way, you know what I mean? Tucking in that puff, you know? Try to sell you tools and all this other stuff to push the, the puffing. Just use some scissors, man. Be cheap like me. Use some scissors. Is that a code? You see it on this one? See the puff sticking out? So that's what I'm just going in there and cutting it. Cut it off. And then I'm just pushing it under. I'm going to take these to the heat gun because I can still see like a little bit of the puff sticking out. You guys can see it. Those of you that do embroidery, you can see a little bit of it sticking out here. So I'm going to go through it one more time with the heat gun. And whenever you hit it with the heat gun, what it does is it shrinks that, shrinks that puff underneath the, um, shrinks it. The, the, the puff that's under there will shrink and it will sink into the the thread not sink in but go into the thread I don't know, whatever you want to call it you know what I mean walk with me here's how we cut our backing put our roll on here So since I buy it by the roll, so I get the bonus. There we go. Pick this up. However big we need it, we're doing the five by fours with the razor blade. Now we just cut with the scissors three pieces or whatever we need out of this. One way to do it. So this is this is originally to cut vinyl, but whenever we were cutting vinyl on it, we noticed that the vinyl was cutting crooked, and I didn't want to sell vinyl to people. Whoa. I don't like selling. I didn't want to sell vinyl to people. It not be the right thing, or not to be the right thing. So. I just, we were gonna throw it away. And then I was like, hey, we can use it over here. Yeah, so take your heat gun. See how hot it gets? So don't face it. You put it onto the hat, don't hold it too long. Just wanna move it around. And you'll see that the, the puff 
is going to shrink and it's going to disappear. There we go. That's the word I was looking for. And then if you see any of your puffs sticking out, push it in. You want to then you're going to want to get your puff and you're going to want to push it in so that while it's hot, it's going to go underneath and then it's going to um, once it cools down, it's going to shake back. It's going to stay at that shape. And it's not going to poke out on you. What's up, Ride? Ride Beats is in the house. Here's my one live, Ride. What the heck? What's going on? What's going on, man? Uh, Demp Designs here for the first time. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. And click that bell so you're notified whenever I put out some new videos. I try to do this more often. So on this hat, we did the. This is flat. The white, or yeah, this one has white. So anything that is white is going to be flat. Anything that is this maroon color is done in 3D puff. And then let me show you another trick. Out. So that is done. Those two hats that we were just doing right now, those are done. Let's scoot y'all back over here. We got Jacob on the three head over there. Look at Jacob. Zoom. Jacob running the 20 needle three head. Lining up some scrubs right now. We did about 90 of them today. 90 scrubs. So. Simple logo. Left chest, 90 of them. Rye Beats is in the house. What's up, Rye? What's you got going on, man? Let's see. What did I miss? What did I miss? Let's see. Yeah, those yellow hoops that he's talking about, those back there, do really good. When I did those those backpacks, I used that circle one right there. Um, if I would try to use the 5x5, five five, it wouldn't have worked. Okay, let's see. Hi, Rai. Hi, everyone. One live a month. I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it. I went to go buy, I went to go buy a, so I bought this on Amazon, Rai, about a month. No, I'm not going to say a month ago. Probably right after Christmas got this cool little pouch with a little cool little you plug this into your phone plug this thing into your shirt it's supposed to make it sound all good but it was an epic fail so then for the next two hours I drove around looking for a microphone and I couldn't find one because I know last time you were making fun of me because of my microwave but I'm gonna try to I'm gonna buy I'm gonna buy one on on a Amazon. I'm, not, I'm gonna make sure it's not a cheap one. The heat gun works way better than a lighter. Way better because it's gonna heat up that foam and it's gonna shrink it. And then you could form it to where you tuck it in, form it how you need it, and then when it dries, it's gonna go away. If it's not sticking out too much, go ahead and use the um, go ahead and use the lighter. You can do that both ways. Appreciate that, Demps. All right, so appreciate you guys. So here's an, here's, here's another thing. So whenever you're doing embroidery, 
So this hat came out flawless. Look at that. Look at that. But for some reason, right there, that happened. That happened right there. So I got a special link for you guys. No, I'm just kidding. Special link is go to Walmart, your neighborhood Walmart, and purchase one of these right here. <laughs> this thing is going to have every color that you need. Every color that you need to basically cover all the thread that you may ever have. So, I'm looking for, not a red, but like a maroonish color. Test it on some backing. So we look at it like a maroonish color. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this and you're gonna dab it right there. So I'm gonna do this, but I'm not gonna do it bust out the sharpie, you know what I'm saying? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you right now is I'm gonna I'm not gonna try to do this through the through there because I wanna make sure I do it right. So hopefully so then I'm just gonna take it. Get it right in there, flip it over. Right there. Look at that. You get a little bit more of it. The DJI mic, I'm gonna have to. So if you see any of that, that bobbin sticking out, match that color and look at that a lot better and we're good to go 99 99% of the time customer won't even see these are all done all are done these are all good to go the next ones are going to be First two hats are done. First two are done. I mean that that was only one out of all of them. So, and, and things happened, you know what I mean? Out of all the hats, there was only one of them that looked like this. They shouldn't do it. I get what you're saying. But I don't care what machine you buy. You buy the SWK one or whatever it is. You buy a Tajima machine. You, I guarantee you. You go to Rakoma's Facebook page, the SW page, the Tajima page, Tajima page, whatever embroidery pages that are out there that are promoting their embroidery machine, there's always people out there talking crap about those machines. Because operator error, I'm telling you. 99% of the stuff that happens is operator error. And that that you just saw there could have been something different in the tension whenever I was doing it. Now look at that. <coughs> no cleanup. I mean, besides that P right there where it didn't trim, it just went from there to there. But look, look how clean that looks. Appreciate that. I'm going to hoop these first sets of hats. I'm going to look into that DJ one. They do cost a lot, man. Um, how do you set your tension for 3D puff? I leave it exactly how it is. Gucci, Gucci. Um, some people say that you want to adjust the pressure foot. That you want to adjust your pressure foot. I don't do it. Like, I'm just being honest with you. I don't. 
I don't do any of that. I just leave it. Whoa. I just leave it as it is. I just leave the tension as it is. I leave the um, the tension as it is, and I leave the pressure foot as it is. I don't mess with any of that stuff. Um, if you if you see something going on with it, then you will obviously want to adjust it. But um, I usually don't see anything that I needed to mess with it whenever I'm whenever I'm doing it. But if I do, but if I do, then again I'll adjust it. And if I do. I'll, I'll loosen the tension so that it's not so tight as it's doing it. But I use a really thick foam. If you look at that. I think that's a three mil, something like that. It's real thick, real thick. Any machine, same with luxury cars. Oh, who you telling, man? Hey, see, um, standard hoop, standard hoops that come with the machine, not the second gen. I do want to try those new ones that came out where it's just a, it's just a wire that goes across here. I do want to try those. Oh, so you, you're the one that created the design? I did. Nice, it came out good. Thank you. Sorry.
At first thought, when I saw it, I was like, oh, it's a pen bear. And then whenever we were printing it, I saw the three on the bottom. And I saw the five, and then I saw the, the yeah. effective, the coaching thing, and I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, do you? Sounds good. So we got our. What's your last call for orders? We take we take orders all day up till we close. So usually about six thirty, six forty-five, it starts to shut closed down but everybody is in our own sections and if someone comes in we have three so this is three storefronts and they'll go through the main door over there and they'll come into the vinyl stand side and then they'll have to stop over there and talk to someone over there and usually we're not taking no more orders for that day but um there's no orders for that day but then they can just put in an order and Anything that we do is three to five days out. If it's uh, DTF stuff, and order's a little bit longer, but any sales on Shopify, you laugh? Did you place one or what? Um, go through and check all so they so these machines already come like this they already come like this on a truck that one over there also came like that on a truck um, they just come over dang it they just come over um, the good thing about ordering the, the single the, the multi-head machines is they come out and they do like training on them the, the, the single head machines they will come they will do a video call with you and show you how to use it 
<clears throat> but being that I've already had these machines, um, when I had that first one, when they came out for this one, it's basically the same thing. So he just asked if we had any questions, if there's anything that we needed help with. He he did his own test. He made sure everything ran good and everything was up to par with it, and that there was no issues before he left. Um, and then whenever I got this one, um, I've had that one for probably, how long we had that one, Jacob, for probably like two months now? Yeah, but you know. So I've had that one for like two months, and when he came to do that one, it was the same guy. Um, and when he came in, um, I say, he already knew who I was. So he was like, hey, like, what do you need help with? I said, I don't need help with anything. I said, I do have some questions with it because if you look at the display on that one, it's like an, a little iPad now or whatever you want to call it. Um, so the, I said, we I have a couple questions on it that I want to ask you. I said, but other than that, since you're already here, can you do the maintenance on all of them? So he did the maintenance on everything. No, so these are, this is because this is, that's the brain. They all run same, same design. Those two are independent. That one, same thing, same design at the same time. And this one, same thing over here. First run with all of the first run with all six heads. Um, it's, the, it's the same design, but when I say the first run, because I'm changing the color. Five star rating. Sweet. Oh look, there's a new order that just came in. I was looking to see who it was, but <laughs> yeah, they can be, but we do. I do. Uh, Linda, you have a you, you do have a good point there. Um. But uh, let me see. Can you embroider from laptop, or you need USB? So you can you can set these up with your with your IP address. 
but we don't do that because we got so many different we got so many different files and let me show you i'll show you how i do all of mine because we got so many different customers that we do um i'm gonna show you so let me get this one going show you how we do it i use i use usbs for all of my customers that come in. all of my repeat customers if it's just something that we're doing one time so look here these are all embroidery files all the way across here all of those right there so let me bring out one and i'll show you how i do it Give you guys an idea if you, it's something that you want to use using so we'll take out number seven these are all in alphabetical order so this is s through w so what i do is i do this let's just say let's go to this one well Too heavy, I guess. So, here's the design for them. So, if anybody, what you can't do with um, by networking it to your to your um, to your embroidery machines is you can't do a, a run sheet. So this right here will have the PDF. So this helps out a lot whenever, if I were to hire someone to come in here. If someone comes in here, a new hire, and I tell them, hey, I need you to go pull Wellstar. I need you to go pull this logo right here. And there's 10 tops that you need to do. They can simply come over here. They can grab this right here. They can see where it's gonna go. That it's a this one doesn't this one's a left chest it should say position placement it should have left chest so it should look like this it should have left chest so they know that this one's going on the left chest they can look right here they're going to say the blue one the, is going to be using blue white blue and it's going to give them the exact number of blue that they're using so that there's no questions of well, what color blue did we use? Because in the beginning, because in the beginning, one of the biggest issues that we were having is um, if I embroidered an image and I used this color right here, this color is still, and then they came in the next time and they were like, yeah, I want to get this done again. We're not trying to, we were guessing on what color we used the last time. So now we don't have to do that because every single one of these, if you look, is going to have the colors that we use, is going to have the approved, the approved stitch out inside of it, a USB with this file on it. So that there's no reason for anybody to go back and try to find what file was used the last time. Um, and that's that's done for every single one of these right here. And again, it's not for every customer. It's not for every customer that comes in here. But if it's one of our repeat customers and they come in here, we can guarantee that it's, it's going to be here, every single one. So then whenever it comes to the colors, like I said, we're not trying to do this. And, and if he could, and like he, he's only, how long have you been working here, Jacob? So he see he's been working here six months and he hasn't done every logo that we have in there so um if this is how they come in they'll come in like this and it's going to tell them 
It's gonna tell them right here the name of the logo, how many tops are in there. So this one for this logo, there's gonna be four tops, and it's gonna tell them that it goes on the left chest. So whenever he goes to the pack, whenever he goes to the binders and he pulls that packet out, there's no guessing where it's gonna go, where the placement is gonna be, where the placement is gonna be, or where uh, or what color we use the last time. Um, so what I usually do is I'll have one binder that we that we'll use and we'll put people in there that say I'm gonna continue to work with you. I'm gonna continue to work with you. And we'll put we'll put it in there. We'll leave it in there and we'll wait um, to see how many times they use us. If they use us enough, then we'll put it into alphabetical order inside of our actual folders. Um, but it, it, we just don't throw them in there right away because we never know. Um, if they're going to come back and then it's just a waste it's not a waste but then we i gotta i gotta spend the money on the usb you know what i mean this is a look at that 16 i don't know if you can see if it's zoomed in it's a 16 gig 16 gigabyte um thumb drive for one file and sometimes um they have different different files so then we just have the different PDFs in there. So like if it's going on something white, they want black thread. If it's going on something black, they want white thread. You know what I mean? So, but yeah, no minimums for anything like that. USBs are not a headache. For us, it's not. Here's another one. There's two more. There's this one right here that one there's all the colors that go with it um, here's another one right here and there's no stitch outs in these yet because we did a stitch out on these and then we gave them to the customer so that they can get approval once they get once they approve the stitch outs then we'll lock these in we'll do a stitch out for us we'll put it inside of here and then we'll go with it um, for us it's not a headache I'm gonna tell you the reason why because it saves us a ton a ton of money if I did this logo right here for, a, for this customer that has over a hundred employees inside of their um, practice. And I did it with one color blue and they came in the next time and ordered 50 scrub tops. And we did it with a different color blue. Um, guess who's gonna end up paying for it because we used the wrong color blue the second time than we used the first time. Make sense? So for us, it's not a headache. Let me load six more hats.
do it, man. I, I need to make a video on it. I've been wanting to make a video on it for other people so that they can, because I'm telling you, man, like one of the biggest issues was in the beginning, a customer would come in and they would get their logo done on a shirt. And there's three of us, there's two other people that work here. There's him and my sister-in-law work here. So if if we get the, if we digitize the, the logo at 3.5 inches and then the customer comes in and says the stitch out on that thumb drive, we put the 3.5 or, or we had like one thumb drive with everything on it and it was 3.5 for that. And then they changed it to five inches and I didn't know that. And then I printed, and then they came back in and was like, hey, I want to get this embroidered on the left chest again. And I'm telling you, because it happened, I did the small one and they made a big fit about it. Well, the last time we did it, we did it bigger. Why'd you do it smaller? I was like, oh dang, I didn't know. You know what I mean? So we had to figure out something so that we're all on the same page every single time. And there's, in this way, it saves us from purchasing, whether it's a Bella Canvas hoodie, uh, independent company hoodie, like those expensive hoodies that they're buying for their brands and then we're putting the wrong logo on it, then I didn't know that we went from a three inch logo to a five inch logo. So then now they get 10, 15 hoodies, I gotta replace them all. This way it keeps everybody on the same page. Turn down that music for me, turn, like turn it off. You know, YouTube be giving strikes and stuff. Like I gotta stop putting music in my videos because um, a video that I did three years ago, the music was not monetized at the time and then three years later it's monetized and now they're like oh you gotta strike so My head machine is not like a single head machine where you can um you know what I don't want big speed to wake up.
you touch the tension is there a question? Yeah, but let me know how much it is before you do it. So let me show you the... This is the Marquis 2001, 2003. This is the new display on it. Pretty cool. It's a display on it. Just three, so knock out three at one time. This one's got 20 needles. I don't use 20 needles, but it's got 20 needles. I don't even use 15 needles, but it's there, right? If I need them, it's there. Let me go back. So how does it feel to work full time at the shop? It's good, right? It's good because, um, I can concentrate on this now. Before it was like I was working and then as I, when I was working, I had to worry about what was going on here. You know what I mean? And now I'm to a point to where like with everybody that I have working here, it pretty much can run itself, not run itself, but the people that work here, um, they basically know when they come in, what they got to do. Um, the only thing that nobody does is I do all the screen printing, so nobody touches that. Um, but other than that, anything else, the screen, the direct to film, running the vinyl stand, um, taking orders, all that stuff. And then even um, like for the embroidery section, they all know what they have to do um, when they come in, so they just knock it out. And it's a good feeling because I've always been to where I had to be in every every aspect of this place and I'm still like that but it's good to know that right now if I want to leave right now I can just let's go home if I want to go home right now because Lori's like let's go let's go let's go let's go then we'll leave say what's up to Ryan <laughs> um yeah so it's, it's good you know what I mean like earlier uh, we were here and I went to go look for that microphone and we were gone for two hours and I was like but, you know what I mean um, it's good it's good to to have your own business but it is it is a lot of a lot of responsibility a lot of pressure because it's not just me no more it's me him and my daughter and another person that works in embroidery and two people that work in the vinyl stand and then my other two daughters that work here um, every once in a while and then The boss. The boss. 
Bryson, what's up, Lauren? I was going to told him, I said, hey, we're live. <laughs> Gotten on yet. We know who's the boss. Yeah. I'll tell you, she keeps her head. She keeps this place in check, I'll tell you that. And we're all family that works here, except two people. Two people that work here are not family. This one. About and I won't show her because she's not. Look at her, she's over there like, mm -mm. <laughs> She's going to make her debut. This guy, this guy came in at 11 o'clock and I was like, damn, he's lucky you can go play golf. He said, I am when, when I get off. <laughs> he said, not no more. He's tired. He said, he's tired. He's tired though? Yeah. You did good though. You did 90 of them. I think it's good. That's what I'm saying. Use that one over Do something different. You get your mind off of doing the same thing. He did good though. So if, if I do that that last run of hats right there and nothing happens, that'll be a hundred hats with no issues. And if he runs what do you have left? That's your last three? Yeah, last three. So that's his last three. That'll be ninety with no issues. So hundred and ninety garments, hats and tops. Zero issues. That's a win. A win all right i'm gonna get out of here appreciate you guys tuning into this i'll try to do it more often rye has told me to do one live a month so i'm gonna try to get back into it i'm gonna do this will be one of the videos that's coming up how to do visors make it look good and then jesse had a request on how to do um richardson 112s so I will also do a video on that to show you guys that it can be done. You guys have a present coming my way. What you got? Good life. I appreciate you, uh, Jesse and David and Rye. Everybody appreciate you guys um, for tuning into this. Maybe we'll stick around a little bit since Rye said he has something coming. We'll run this next six hats. But yeah, it's... Yeah, so... Yeah, so I've been wanting to try to get on here more. It's, it's a little bit tougher because it's hard to get on here during the day. And then with customers coming in here, you know what I mean? Um, and then at the same time, it's even harder to shoot a video because if I'm doing something live, I can just break away from here and go do that. And it's hard to shoot a video in here during the day because there's so much going on in here. You know what I mean? So it's hard to do that. Oh, okay, okay, cool. We're going to see Ryan in a bubble suit in his next video, like an E.T., All right, so I appreciate you guys. I'm going to get out of here. Thank you guys for watching this video. Thank you guys for all the support, and until next time, keep pressing.